in this video we are going to see some information about PF or say what is power factor and the logic behind improvement of the power factor of mainly inductive type system inductive type system includes motors like induction motors which works on AC supply power factor is the cosine angle between the voltage and current in math world we can indicate by cos theta and cos theta where theta equals the volt the angle between the voltage which is across the system and current I fed to the system. Power factor indicates how much useful power kilowatt used out of total power KVA fed to the system. In inductive system like induction motor, alternator also called as AC generator, shock coils etc requires more reactive power for its operation because they are inductive loads. They require more reactive power for its operation. And to improve the power factor, we have the option like introducing a capacitor bank to the system or by synchronous condenser for the power system or by phase advancer. Mainly at the LT side, capacitor banks are used for improvement of power system or say power factor of the system. Let's see the logic behind the improvement of power factor. So to understand it, we have to clear the concept, concept about the vector diagram of the inductive load. Let mark O as the origin point and the voltage reference line V and as is the inductive load, the current I will always lag behind some angle theta and then take a projection of current I on the voltage reference line and mark these points A and B and using trigonometric functions we got OA distance as a I cos theta and AB distance I sine theta. Let's multiply this triangle with V and we will get the power of the system in terms, terms of trigonometric functions. Power triangle of the inductive load system. Origin point O. Vi cos theta. Vi. The angle between them is theta. And points A B and its value is Vi sin theta. The OA line is called as active power which is indicated by P. Vi sin theta is our reactive power which is indicated by Q. Vi is the apparent power which is indicated by S. And the relation between these three powers are S square equals P square plus Q square or say the square root of apparent power equals square root of active power plus square root of reactive power. We can simplify the equation then we get our apparent power as equals root of p square plus q square. Let replace by the some more suitable indications. This is as kilowatt, this is as kVAR and this is as KVA. As I told you before, apparent power square equals active power square plus in addition to reactive power square. In short, KVA square equals KW square plus KVA R square. And the power factor we can find by the trigonometric function cos cos phi or say cos theta equals kilowatt divided by KV, kva and power factor also equals r by z r is the resistance of the system divided by the impedance of the system
Let us see an example which is best way to illustrate the how much active reactive or apparent power is used to any inductive system. Assume a circuit draws a current of 20 ampere that means it takes a 20 ampere at a voltage of 230 volt and power factor of 0.8 lag. Lag means it's an inductive system. So we have a data like voltage is 230 volt, current I is 20 ampere and cos theta which is our power factor is 0.8 lag. So if we have to find apparent power then we can use the equation from the previously showed triangle apparent power equals Vi. We have value of voltage and current both. We can find apparent power directly by just multiplying voltage and current which is, which is 230 into 20 which is it was a 4600 Va. Then if we want to find active power then we just have to multiply by the cos theta. We will get our answer as 3680 Va. Same for a reactive power. We have to multiply by sin theta instead of cos theta in the apparent power system. Then we got 230 into 20 into 0.6 by converting the trigonometric function of cos theta into sin theta or take finding angle theta by using inverse cos rule we can get 0.6 and the main point is here reactive power use by system is 2760VAAR calculation of required KVR supply for the power factor correction let's take a circuit or say inductive circuit which has resistance and inductance as shown in figure let we are giving the voltage across this inductive load as V and current I dash is flowing through the system and load receives current I Obviously, I dash equals I. Let's connect a capacitor parallel, parallel to the inductive load. Then, it consumes or not say consume is a not a proper word because capacitor is not consuming any energy. It's just transferring the energy from one side to another side. And let mark the current IC taken by the capacitor. Now in this condition I dash doesn't equal to I. That means supply current is doesn't equal to the load current. It will be different from the original. Let make a factor diagram for this circuit. Let mark as a voltage as a reference line. As its inductive load we have to lag the current I by some angle theta 1 because we are going to decrease the theta angle of the previous position to theta 2 making cross section I cos theta 1 I sin theta 2 sorry I sin theta 1 and by introducing the capacitor and capacitor always lead the voltage by the 90 degree and as it is a ideal capacitor it always leads by 90 degree as you can see here and the current is IC flowing through the capacitor as per indicated by the circuit As you can see, the arithmetic subtraction will be occur here and we will get the new current value for the power system I dash. This I dash is our supply current which is lesser than the load current which is 
higher than the supply current and let mark this is a new new current angle as a theta 2 so we were here voltage as a reference line from the vector diagram it is clear that after power factor correction the lagging reactive component of the load is reduced to i dash sine theta 2 it is obvious that by using the trigonometric functions we can find i dash sine theta 2 value of the of this line as we know i dash sine theta 2 equals to i sine theta 1 minus i c it is an arithmetic sum because it all comes in the one single line from that we can find ic which is ic equals i sine theta 1 minus i dash sine theta 2 capacitance of the capacitor to improve power factor from the cos theta 1 to cos theta 2 xc which is the reactance of the capacitor equals 1 divided by w or say omega c equals also v by ic it's uh, related to ohm's rule of the second one and by rearranging these equations we got capacitor c as ic divided by omega v so we know already know the omega value for the our system is 2 pi f and voltage we also know across the load and ic we can get from from this equation which is proven above let mark origin point o and taking kilowatt line this is our kvr one line let mark as ab for apparent power is kva1 an angle between this 2 kilowatt and kv1 is theta1 let mark point c reactive power demand from supply lines reduced to kvr kvr1 to kvr2 for that purpose c point is marked kvr2 so we can take a straight line and we can find kva2 which is lesser than the kva1 in the previous system of the supply that mark the angle between this kva2 and kilowatt as theta2 leading kva r supplied by the power factor correction device bc for that bc equals ab minus ac which we can say that kva r1 minus kva r2 and from using trigonometric functions we can find kva r1 KVA equals kilowatt 10 theta 1 and kva r2 equals kilowatt 10 theta 2 and putting this value in this equation and taking kilowatt a common from these equations we got kilowatt in bracket 10 theta 1 minus 10 theta 2 let's take a illustrative example for this purpose an AC generator is supplying a load of 650 kilowatt at the power factor of 0.65 so we have to find what is size of capacitor capacitor in KVAR is required to raise the power factor to unity and how many more kilowatt can be supplied by the alternator for the same KVA loading when power factor improved so as we know by improving the power factor we can also supply more active power to the system or say to the load so we have the value 
supply kilowatt is 650 kilowatt we have original power factor cos theta 1 equals 0 0.65 we want the final power factor as cos theta 2 equals 1 cos theta 1 so we can find by the trigonometric equations and by use of KLC also as 1.169 theta 1 and theta 2 we can find by putting the value of cos inverse 1 2 then we got a 0 so required capacitor KVAR to improve power factor from 0 0.75 to 1 equals KVAR capacitor required equals P in bracket 10 theta 1 minus 10 theta 2 here P is our kilowatt so 650 kilowatt in bracket 1.169 for theta 10 theta 1 and 10 theta 2 equals 0 so we got the KVAR for this purpose is 759.85 KVAR we know that the power factor equals cos theta equals kilowatt by KVA or say KVA equals kilowatt divided by cos theta taking KVA as a subject so we can find that by putting the value of the equation kilowatt which is P 650 kilowatt divided by KVA or say power factor 565 which is 1000 when the system wasn't improved when power factor is raised to unity number of kilowatt equals KVA into cos theta 1000 kilowatt we can get by multiplying the KVA into cos theta hence increased power supplied by alternator we can find by just subtracting this number of kilowatt which can supply by the alternator to the system with unit power factor which is 1000 kilowatt and the previously supplied by the system is 650 kilowatt we got 350 kilowatt extra we can supply if the power factor we improve to the unity from the above discussion we can conclude that by introducing power factor correcting device like capacitor in adequate amount the system power factor improves which in result number one reduction in system supply current second system loading third save electricity and fourth which is all likes no penalty from power supply provider so thank you for watching see you next time